And on the foreign scene, U.S. congressional Democrats on Monday have concluded plans to unveil a sweeping package of legislation to combat police violence and racial injustice after two weeks of protests backed by George Floyd's death in Minneapolis. The proposal is to ban police chokeholds and racial profiling, which require nationwide use of body cameras, subject police to civilian review boards, and abolish the legal doctrine known as qualified immunity. It is unclear if the proposal will receive support from Republicans who control the U.S. Senate. Their support and that of Republican President Donald Trump will be needed for the measure to become a law. Justice and Policing Act establishes a bold, transformative vision of policing in America. Never again should the world be subjected to witnessing what we saw on the streets in Minneapolis, the slow murder of an individual by a uniformed police officer. Let us, my colleagues, just go over some of those names of martyrdom. George Floyd, Jackson Davis, Oscar Grant. So sad, Breonna Taylor. Armand Arbery, Botham John, Terence Crutcher, Philandro Castle, Freddie Gray, Walter Scott, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Javon Martin, my colleagues, any other names you want to add? Sean Bell. You alone. Thank you. We cannot settle for anything less than transformative structural change which is why the Justice in Policing Act will remove barriers to pr prosecuting police misconduct and covering damages by addressing the quality immunity doctrine. It's a pretty exciting time. This is a transformational piece of legislation. This is an important day. The martyrdom, the martyrdom of George Floyd, and by Tuesday, by tomorrow, may he rest in peace has made a change in the world. Joining us to speak on the Black Lives Matter protests in the United Kingdom is spoken word artist Kemi Ladipo. Thank you, Kemi, for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. And how are you doing tonight, Kemi? I'm fine, thank you. Good to know. Now, why do you feel the Black Lives Matter protests, which originated in Minneapolis, has caught fire across the globe, including the UK? Um, I feel um, what is most instrumental in this is the video. Yes, the nine minutes video showing the death of George Floyd. And that video has evoked so many reactions from people. On one side, people can relate. People can see themselves being in that position. People are angry, people are scared, and they need a change. And on the other side, people are shocked. They probably thought racism was a thing of the past or it's just something that happened many years ago during slavery. They can't believe that he, and like a man can be killed in broad daylight in such a manner. So I think one of the things that really evoked that change and made everyone come together and talk about it is the video. Now, what will be the message of the protesters in UK, for example, now talking about it being in context? What could it be? The message is simple. It's not really about UK per se. It's about humanity. It's about everyone coming together and seeing that this is not right. And we all have to take a stand. We all have to stand up and fight against injustice, against racism in today. And the UK, in the UK, it, all, it is also prominent. It might not yet have been caught on tape, but it really is happening here as well. And so the people in the UK are also tired and they're like, we're not going to wait for our own video to come out. We're going to stop it right now. We're going to speak up against injustice and make sure that it doesn't happen ever. Now, Kemi, I, I know you, you not only were part of the protest on Saturday, but you performed. What led to your playing such a prominent role? Um, so... I really don't think my role was that prominent. I'm just someone who has a voice and used my voice to speak up against injustice. And this is the same thing I would encourage anyone else to do, just to speak up, not to be silent. So even if it's against racism, rape, whatever the injustice is, just speaking up against it. And so I was given the opportunity to speak my mind, speak my truth speak what I was feeling and what I know my brothers and sisters all over the world are also feeling. 
Now, in so, just a couple of sentences, if you will, can, can you describe to us what the atmosphere was like during the protests and you getting on stage to do what, what, what she did? The atmosphere was phenomenal here in Newcastle. It was so good to see so many people, so many people coming together to stand against evil. And this is even people from different races. Um, white people, people from all over the world were there. And this, this doesn't mean that, oh, racism isn't, you know, happening here. And that's why people from other races are supporting. No, it's, it just means that people are listening now and people are, it's, it's, not, it's now obvious to people. They've seen it in broad daylight and they're like, no, this can't happen. So it was just that, that feeling of unity, that feeling of we're standing with you, we hear you. And for the first time as a black young lady myself, I felt seen, I felt not judged. I felt comfortable in my own skin, walking in the midst of all those people. I felt safe. And it was just a very, very phenomenal experience. I don't even know the words to use to describe. L lastly, Kemi, before I let you go tonight, your message speaks of hope at such a time when many may feel traumatized by the events that triggered the protests. What would be your message of hope to those who say the revelation of the I can't breathe incident still leave them feeling raw? I said, we are Martin Luther King's dream come true. So we must never stop dreaming. That's the line I said in my piece, so cry. And it's just a message that we must never lose sight of that better tomorrow, that brighter future where things are how, how they are supposed to be. And my message is just to tell people like me, my brothers, my sisters, to not be complacent, to not be silent, to not accept this evil as numb, but to stand up and fight and speak for what they believe in. And also to others to, to think twice before they judge someone. Like they should get to know people for who they really are before they act, before they speak. And so my message is just to open the eyes of people to make sure that they can see that this problem does exist and so we can all think of a way to walk and fix the problem and to make sure that we never lose hope and believe that justice will always come to an end and our better tomorrow is, is really really close i dare say that racism if everyone can play their part racism can end in our generation Spoken one artist, Kemi Ladipo, thank you for all the sunshine you do put out there in the world, and thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. Also joining us to speak on the Black Lives Matter and also comparing the protest situation in Brazil to the UK is entrepreneur Barbara Stein. Thank you, Barbara, for joining us on the news. Hello, Benny, and thank you for having me. It's an honor. I'm doing great, and how are you doing? Yeah, it's good. I mean, uh, ex exciting times in the sense that what's going on has been so shocking, but at the same time to see the reaction that's been going around the globe is just absolutely um, amazing, um, emotional and powerful. And I think that all of these different countries have touched a chord with what happened um, with um, um, Floyd, but it's not just him, it's been so many others, right? And um, and I've been literally very surprised countries like India and others, which I, I wouldn't have thought, but I think they've touched a chord on the kind of prejudice and uh, injustice and discrimination that a lot of countries suffer in their own different ways. And at the same time, I think that um, with the um, leadership and the president in the US, the divisiveness and also that there has been lack of condemnation, I think has also triggered, I think, an additional spark to all of this. Now, having been one who has lived and walked around the world, do, do you feel it is one message that has been adopted or even conveyed in the light of all of the protests going on globally? Well, a, a little bit of what I just mentioned, right, in the sense that um, I think um, different countries uh, all feel, and if they really do uh, introspection, they all see that there is some form of discrimination that is going on and that the justice system is changing. And so um, I think uh, the images of George Floyd, as Kemi mentioned, were so vivid and uh, everybody could relate to that, would it be black or would it be other uh, racial uh, background they could relate to some of this reality that is happening in their own countries and um, and therefore also on the 
a, a, you know, the lack of leadership, for example, in this case in the United States, but sometimes of other countries where discrimination is not um, fought for as it should. So I think that those are probably the, the two messages that I, I kind of see coming out nice and clearly. How might the struggles of black Americans compare or contrast with those of black people in Brazil or even in England where we have seen protests gathering in momentum? Yeah. Look, I'm not a sociologist, but I have to say this is a, a fascinating topic. Uh, Brazil is a very complex um, country, um, mainly uh, built by uh, slave coming from Africa. And what's absolutely incredible is just not them, but also the immigration that it's had in the years of Italian, German, uh, Portuguese, Spanish immigration, and even Japanese, the largest side of Japan. So it's a tutti frutti of cultures. But what's incredible, Benny, about all of this is that what makes uh, people identify with being Brazilian is actually things to do with the African culture, things like capoeira, and samba, I mean, who hasn't heard of samba? Uh, this is all coming from the African culture, which the slaves um, always kept within themselves, even in moments where it was abolished. And even in the food, which is a national dish, is feijoada, uh, basically the dish that the slaves would have. And so it's kind of incredible that to be a Brazilian, you are also actually um, having all of this, let's say, openness of the African culture. So it's, it's very surreal. But at another level, there's a lot of discrimination, absolutely, social injustice. And I think one of the main differences um, is that, for example, you do see, for example, people from the black community are very prominent in what is culture, music and arts and uh, sports like football, for example. But you do, unfortunately, see a huge gap in key roles of within uh, uh, managerial, uh, senior management, politics, um, judges, and so on and so forth. And that is, I, I think, unacceptable. And, uh, and I think that that is a huge difference of what you would see, for example, in the UK and in the US. I okay. think in the UK, from that perspective, is way more balanced. There's no comparison in terms of also the, the, the system, in terms of law and how people are, are protected. In, in Brazil, you don't have that. The, the justice right. system um, does not protect Barbara, this before I, let you go, before I let you go, um, what more do you think, in your opinion, needs to be done to ensure that the message goes beyond a trending topic and beyond this protest? Well, I, I think, you know, people need to 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 realize that um, people are not born racist or with biases. And uh, this means that there's something really wrong goes on. And um, this means what Kemi was saying, people need to speak up. We cannot stay silent. Uh, so people need to be aware. They need to speak up. We need to also have clear condemnation of racism and any form of uh, discrimination and I think this is a good opportunity not only in regarding to black lives and the black community but also other communities and minorities that are existing because this would really I think make a huge difference and hopefully we can see that difference in our generation and not wait for then our children's children's generation for other minorities to also be impacted. Barbara Stein it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news thank you for your time. Thank you thank you